Hello. In this video, uh, we will share our experience with serverless techniques and describe our next generation digital library platform built on the AWS cloud. My name is Bill Ingram. I'm Assistant Dean and Director of IT for University Libraries at Virginia Tech. I will be joined in this presentation by Yinlin Chin, Digital Library Architect. After a brief introduction, Yinlin will discuss the technical details of the new digital library platform. We will begin by describing the challenges and technical barriers of building digital library applications. Next, we will present an overview of the Virginia Tech Digital Library Platform and the 12-factor methodology for building software as a service applications. We will describe the process of transitioning from a monolithic digital library architecture into a set of serverless micros microservices. And we will conclude with lessons learned and next steps. Online access to digital research and educational materials have become increasingly important, and the ongoing impact of COVID-19 has reinforced and accelerated the library's investments in digital resources. Before transitioning to the serverless architecture, the library maintained multiple repository and digital library applications. But the cost of maintaining multiple full stack applications was becoming overwhelming. Each system has its particular quirks and, the, and it's been difficult to find developers and systems administrators with deep knowledge of these niche systems. Our new system architecture alleviates many of these challenges. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Yinlin to describe the new digital library platform in detail. Thanks, Bill. So, Digital library platform con contains a lot of uh, service. And uh, for each service, it's composed of microservice and the management service. So in here, each, each service focus on one job and do one job well. And our website built on top of each service and to support different needs. So this is a very, a very complicated code performance. So how, how do we build this? We use uh, 12 factor methodologies. 12 factors provide 12 best parties to enable us to build scalable, maintainable, cloud based service. And this methodology is being adopted by many companies, such as Amazon, Google, Microsoft. So we apply these best practices to implement our service. So it will require a huge amount of time. But actually, we don't need to build everything by ourselves because we use the cloud. So many things in here already provide by the cloud providers. So we use this service, we build on top of this service in order to make our service more scalable in the cloud. So in the library settings, we, our team is about five people. So we build our service on top of the AWS service, which is incremented by thousands of engineers. They create these ecosystems and they do it very well. And they handle many of the things we don't want to do, like they set up all the hardware, they handle all the securities, they handle all the networking infrastructures, which we just use that. We don't need to build everything by ourselves. We build our service on top of this service so we can provide a stronger cloud service as before if we build in local. Also, we follow this principle to build our serverless applications. So we autom autom automate every microservice and uh, it's triggered by event, 
automatically. Also, every single service have their single purpose and do it very well. And we only use the resource we need. Also, because we built on top of many services provided by the cloud providers, so we have a more powerful front end, direct internet with backend service. So we can provide rich and uh, powerful front end and increase our user experience on top of this. Also, we use the log tools, monitor tools provided by the cloud providers, which can monitor our applications behavior to help us more understand our applications and that we can trigger all the issues and make our application more better. In the past, we use the three layers architectures. So everything is in one stack. You make a change, you need to redeploy re the whole entire applications. For the small site, it could be okay. But when our business become more complicated, this three layer architecture is not enough for us to build our library service. So we transfer from the three layer architecture into the serverless architectures. So after we transfer to the serverless architectures, we are not only provide one user, face, user interface, we provide multiple micro front end, multiple user interface, and also API interface. And under the user interface, there are a lot of microservices connect, commun communicate with backend management service. And each service do one job and do that job very well. So we can create different combination of the service pipelines to serve different kind of the business logic and to support multiple combination of business need. And not only the service we use in the business logic, we can choose purpose built database. So each database good at one thing, for example, traditional relational database we use this to uh, do the transitional data. And uh, we can use the key value database or we can use document database. And then we can also use elliptic search. So based on a different business need, we can pick and choose and combine different service communicate with different microservices and provide the service we want to the user. So, and in the before a site, maybe just using one stake of software and build that. So now we only need to focus on to make our digital library platform stronger, can solve, continue adding new features, new functionality into these platforms and the uh, tool one body can support multiple sites and uh, each site can have their own user base on purpose, on purpose and uh, provide their service to the user. We still use our multiple department environment. So each site it will have a dev site a test site and a production site. We still implement our code features and commit to the code the part, uh, source control servers such as GitHub. And the difference is that after we commit our code, we let AWS to deploy our code for us. We no longer need to deploy the server, deploy the code by ourselves. We use AWS, we set up a pipeline so they can deploy this for us, which saves us a lot of time. Also, in the past, a site at least needs three servers, right? three environments. 
So three sites, you need at least nine. 10 sites, you need 30 at least. And also sometimes one test server is not enough. You maybe need multiple test sites. Also, you maybe need multiple dev sites. We have this issue in the past. To handle, like, if we want five test sites, five dev sites, it's already 10 and uh, handle three different websites. So it's about 20 different servers. So imagine this servers, it's a lot of work because each site is just a server or either containers. You still have to handle networking, hardware, storage. They require a lot of time to handle that. It's complicated. After we switch to AWS, all the deployment is by AWS. We just tell, okay, we have a new features. Give us the server to show our new features. And that's it. We don't, we no longer need to figure out how to deploy that, how to figure out details, how the network settings. You just by one click, automatically deploy. And then we can have unlimited test site, unlimited dev site. And the entire process is fully automatic. So once our code comes into the source code servers like GitHub, it trigger by AWS and the AWS create a server, build our code, test our code, deploy and verify. Finally, we simply click the link they provide and we can see our new features. Our test, we can test it and to decide if we want to merge into the productions. And the time we need, take this for example, one build take like 18 minutes. In the past, 18 minutes is not enough to create a server. Which, so because we can have unlimited test size, unlimited test size. So right now we can do like this. So we can have one change, one single pull request can have one site. So this functionality we cannot do in the past using the single local server. So take this for example, we can have four pull requests and the four test site at the same time using the AWS. So it's totally different compared to before and the which increase our product productivity of the software develop very quickly. So in the past we allocate a resource. So no matter how the traffic is uh, is heavy or is light, we always require resource. And uh, you can see the blue blue color in here is just waste because we already a fixed resource. But after we switch to the Microsoft like serverless architectures, we can more control the resource we use. So some we still uh, learn this is still a learning process because uh, all the Microsoft can be tuned and uh, we need to do some tests, but we can more control and the more confidence to control this resource we use in the cloud. And uh, when we use more, more efficient on the resource, we pay less. This is how the cow service, you pay less. You, you only pay your use, right? So as long as we can use the electric resource we need, we pay less for our usage. Also, after we deployment our website into the AWS, the performance is increased because we utilize the, the edge computing of the AWS. So our sites not only like support in Virginia, everywhere around the global can have a similar response time of our website. Also, besides compare the performance of the website, there are many things we cannot do in the past, but we can do it now on the AWS. This is an example. In the past, we need to acquire 
local server or we create a multiple server in the AWS. In order to process a large amount of the image. After we deploy our code into a serverless architectures. So in here, we use the same call base, use the same programs. The difference is that we package our program into a microservice and the trigger the backend AWS service. So AWS will create multiple batch jobs. Inside each batch job is the Docker, Docker containers to run one set of image. Once we set it up, we no longer need to consider or how much server we need. We just let that to decide by AWS. We define how much does it need for each job and uh, let AWS to handle all the service creation, all the container, all the step. We let AWS to do that for us. So in the past, we need to spend months to handle the image data set we have. After we transfer into a service architecture, we just finish in two days. And then we can finish more collections and also in two days. Also in the past, once we have a server, we need to install the software. We, we need to install the uh, libraries in order to deploy our code. But when we use the AWS, this managed service is already there for us to use. What we need to do is to kill AWS, how to deploy our service in the, in the AWS. So just like we programming our microservice into a Lambda function, for example, we also program, programming our entire infrastructures as a code. After we finish this template, deploy a, a huge set of the call service just by one click of the buttons. And then we can have a multiple environment like this contain many different kinds of AW service and very quickly. Also, each service provided by the AWS, they provide the monitor to us. So it helps us to understand our applications, behavior, performance, issues, almost in real time. So we can continue improve our applications and make our application even better and more easily. We don't need to build this monitor tool by ourselves. We just use it. We use, so this saves us a lot of time. So we can focus more on the create a new service find more optimal way to make our application more better. Also, the cost model is totally different. In the past, we need to find budget, okay? And uh, to estimate the server we need to use, but usually we just acquire more than we need. And also, after server is purchased, we need to human to install or config the server, handle the network, acquire the port, IP address, a lot of things. But now our consideration is what service can we choose in order to support our business need? We don't, the, how to create a server is not our concern. And our concern is how can we use this service more efficiently so we can pay less. And also in the, in the past, the service is need to be always wrong, right? So even the service is idle, you still, the server is on, it's continue running as always. But compared to cloud, if the server is idle, then we don't need that server and we don't want to pay anything and we don't need to pay anything because the server is idle. 
when this new request is coming, the server just bring it up and handle the request. And all the process is automatically. So how we show today, uh, we have show demonstrate many serverless architectures. We also publish all these all our works in the GitHub is open sourced. So feel free to check it out and to see our digital library platforms. So in here, I will I would like to lay turn it to Bios so he will talk about conclusion and our future work. Thank you. Thanks, Yinlin. To summarize, you could think of serverless services like Lego bricks. We snap the bricks together to build digital library services. The developers are able to write less code and development time is much quicker. The applications they build are more resilient, secure, and scalable, and cost efficient than the traditional server-based environment. Another benefit of this technology is the AWS community, which is large and vibrant. There is an abundance of documentation and educational resources. We're looking ahead to building new features and enhancement to our digital library platform. We're exploring AI, machine learning, and deep learning services, as well as text and data mining. Finally, we're looking for collaboration opportunities with teams from other institutions who are developing applications in the AWS ecosystem. We're happy to share code and ideas, so please do get in touch. Well, thank you for your time. Here's a link to our GitHub repositories where you can find all of our code. And thanks again.